So, so Paul, we saw that as we look beyond our galaxy, we have a few neighboring dwarfs, and then we have some, we have Andromeda, and we have this local group, and then some elliptical galaxies, which are in clusters. But what if we just keep looking further? Do we just keep seeing more of the same? Kind of, yes. I mean, people have done surveys of now tens of millions of galaxies where they map their location. What we're seeing here is a fly through of one of the biggest surveys, a slow digital sky yep. survey, uh, survey of galaxies. And what you can see is there are just galaxies and galaxies and galaxies going out as far as we can see. So the further we look back, we just see more of them. That's right. But they're not uniformly distributed. They seem to be, uh, uh, they're fairly uniform. We see galaxies yep. at all distances, but they seem to be a line, but first of all, you get the clusters. Yep. Uh, and Virgo is a big cluster, but there are much bigger clusters than Virgo out what there. But we call super clusters, even. <laughs> and then clusters themselves will group together into super clusters. Yes. And then we get like strings and filaments of galaxies. Um, here's a, a slice done with an Australian survey, the 60F Galaxy Redshift survey. And what you can see is there are like strings of galaxies and walls of galaxies. So, so each dot here is a, gif a, a galaxy. Yes, yeah, so each dot is a, probably a disk or an elliptical galaxy. Uh, so we're now <laughs> much different scale. You know, only a few minutes ago, each dot was a star. Now yeah. we've got each dot as a galaxy. Um, and it's actually a bit like a bubble bath. You know, if you had a bubble bath, you maybe put a piece of glass over it to see a cross section through it. You'll see yeah. all the edges of the bubbles and where the corners where the bubbles meet up. And it's a bit like that, a foam. So it kind of reminds me a bit of when we're looking at our galaxy, right? When we look relatively nearby, we see stars evenly distributed, we don't see any structure. It takes us a long time to get away from the center of our galaxy that we start to see it's a squashed disk. So now we're sufficiently far away or big enough that we see this structure. That's right. So we're seeing this bubble-like filament structure with clusters themselves forming superclusters. So, you know, we're talking about our address. We'd say, you know, Milky Way, um, local group. Local group is outskirts of the Virgo cluster. We're actually being sucked in towards the Virgo cluster. Um, and then the Virgo cluster is part of uh, this filament sort of structure, structure. Yeah, yeah, which they yeah. don't have names because there's so many of them. That's right. Um, and here again is another survey. Um, and what you can see is this, these lines of galaxies, these filaments with clusters often where several filaments meet. Yeah. And galaxies are sometimes funneled down the filaments into these clusters. Okay. What happens if we go with bigger still? Do the filaments themselves dry up into super filaments and hyper filaments? Well, actually, no. We can okay. do incredibly long distance surveys. This is a survey done using quasars. Now, a quasar, which is my favorite, <laughs> yes. is when one of these massive black holes in the middle of a galaxy starts eating something. Our own black hole is not doing this. That's right. But some of them, again, we talk much more about this elsewhere in the sequence of courses. But sometimes they'll be eating stuff. When they eat, they shine like crazy. They can outshine the rest of the galaxy light by uh, 100,000 yep. times which means it's easy to see them even up to billions of light years. So we can see them much easier than some of these normal galaxies. That's right. Um, so even with, a, even with a small amateur telescope, you can see one of these Decor quasars, 3C273, 3 3 3 3 3 <laughs> which is several billion light years away. And with, the, with a, even a small professional telescope, you can see these things out to distances of yep. uh, 10 billion light years. No trouble. I mean, easy for professional astronomy. Um, and here's a map of hundreds of thousands of these things. And on these scales, it's actually pretty boring. Yeah, it, it kind of just looks random. We don't see those clear structures that we saw with the galaxies closer in. That's right. There is a hole around us. We seem yep. to be in a quasar-free zone. But that's not because <laughs> quasars don't like us. It's actually a time effect. As you look uh, okay. yeah. several billion years out, we're looking several billion years back in time. And it turns out when the universe was young, these quasars had lots of stuff to eat, and they were shining. But before long, they'd eaten everything that came near them. Any star that was in an orbit that was going to near a black hole has been eaten. So they stopped shining. Uh, so the black holes are still around. They're just not shining because they've eaten everything. They're gotcha. just sitting there okay. with a satisfied expression, empty place in front of them. So, you know, we, we started out at the dinner, and now we're kind of in the post-comatose nap over yes, here. Yes, one way for thin mint. <laughs> <laughs> so the fact that we don't see many near us simply because they're still there, but okay. they've just eaten themselves silly. Um, but in all directions, north, south, east, west, they seem to be very uniform. Okay. So it looks like when you're on scales of hundreds of millions of light years or thousands of millions of light years, the universe does seem to be pretty boring. Interesting. Pretty uniform. Okay. And in fact, that's one of the fundamental assumptions of astronomy is uniformity on large scales. So it started off uniform, but then started to grow this structure later on to form the galaxies? On the smaller scales, but on the large yeah. scales, it's still pretty damn uniform. 
And that's kind of where our address ends. We've gone all the way from the solar system out to the edges of the universe. And as far as we can tell, beyond the scale of these filaments, there There's, ain't much. It's yeah. just a uniform universe. It's much the same everywhere. And these are all of these galaxies, which are, for the most part, the same style. A lot of them are these disc shape with these thin parts and stars in them. And these stars, as you said, have all the planets around it. That's right. So, but just to give a sense of scale, each of these dots is a galaxy. Each of these is 100,000 million stars, probably with your umpteen planets orbiting around it. We've seen what a star is. So that, pro that means that overall, the total number of stars within range of our telescopes is, is about 10 to the 22 or 10 to the 23, which is about the same as the number of grains of sand on Earth. It's a lot of stars out That's there. That's a lot of stars. This and even more planets. planets. That's right. This is why no one gets excited when you discover a new star. It's like being on the beach. Ha ah, ha! I've discovered a new grain of sand! And this, is why we, and this is why we don't have time to name them all, because you could even spin a career naming them all, because you would only make a fraction of them. That's right. Even if you named one a second for the rest of your life, you're not going to come close. That's right.